Motoyno Aguirre Jr. and this is my Clyde profile. Uh, well, SOSAM started back in September 11, 2011. Uh, we did the first SOSAM uh, sneaker convention at the Rona Car Center, yeah. thanks to Big Boy Cheng. We started SOSAM with a group of friends from the group called Soul Haven Sneakers yeah. Community. So together with uh, some of our friends there, uh, we decided to do an event together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really chaotic from from the start because you know there were so many uh, cooks uh, in in the kitchen. So we ended up just you know they just let me do it since I have a background in doing events. Mm -hmm. So I was the one that uh, did the event and funded the entire event. And uh, we were expecting actually around 500 people. We had about 2,000, more than 2,500 people that went to the event and uh, it was a smashing success because we didn't expect to have that much. Actually, we, 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 we thought about doing the name Sneaker Con Manila, but then we forgot that it, it was, uh, I mean, through a basher from another group, he said, hey, you idiots, there's already an event called uh, Sneaker Con and it's registered in the U.S., so you can't use that. You know, and that gave us the idea that we shouldn't do sneaker con. Instead, we changed it to Soul Slam. Actually, it was my brother-in-law John who lives uh, with my uh, sister in San Diego. There's a, there's this event in San Diego called uh, Soul Slam. S O U L Slam. It's a rock annual rock event that happens um, in downtown uh, San Diego. And he told me, like, why did you? Call the name Soul and uh, change the name S O U L to S O L E Slam. And you know, I didn't have any ideas back then on naming stuff. Uh, um, so we added Manila to it because when I registered it at for IPO, they required uh, attaching uh, that for for events. So it was the norm back then. So back then it was called Soul Slam Manila, hence the logo of Soul Slam Manila. And then. 2014, we removed Manila and just stuck with Soul Slam. Yeah. Uh, what sets Soul Slam apart from other lifestyle brands? I think the difference with, with Soul Slam is that we're not competing against anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, some brands might think that you know they're competing with us, but in fact they're not because what we offer is something very different uh, compared to others. It's a lifestyle. Uh, that started from sneakers and then it just grew from there, from sneakers to streetwear, to lifestyle, music, art, fashion. So it just uh, grew from there. Even the smaller subcultures, when you know, it's different like cars. We had cars uh, combined with, with sneakers and, you know, even vapors and, and so many different things like toys. It's all relative. All that combination is a combination of what SoSam is today. Uh, basically, uh, like in our social media accounts for, for SoSam, people are going to be surprised to find out that since the first and up to now, I'm the one that's handling the, the social media account of SoSam. So I'm the one posting every day for it, you know. It's basically all my interests and passion in basketball and especially the NBA, and anything funny that I think you know, it's culturally relevant. Um, you'll see there, not just shoes, you know. Fila. Yeah. Uh, great to consult. And so, how did it start? Like, how? Um, I was, uh, I was working with uh, various brands back then. Um, I announced that on, on social media, I'm now a sneaker uh, free agent. So I'm open to work with any brand. So okay. there came offers from from different brands. There were four brands and uh, of all the offers that I received, the, the best one was with Fila because I had the creative freedom and the trust of the owners, uh, Mrs. Chris Albert and Butch Albert on doing a lot of the marketing for for the brand together with uh, her sister, Anna Bad Santos, who you know, is doing an amazing job with the resurgence of the the fila brand and with, with with fila it's the feel of nostalgia the look of 
its heritage from the 80s and 90s, 80s, 70s tennis with Bjorn uh, Borg, uh, with tennis Grant Hill with, in the 90s, you know, and all these stars that they've had on their heydays in, in the 90s. So it's back. From Pila, no? we, we were expecting a lot. Okay. Yeah, um, so many uh, other shoes just besides the disruptor, the Feel Ray, Barricade. No, the Grand Hill line, Grand Hill line even came, came out. You know, yeah, the Ray Tracer uh, is one of my favorite silhouettes, actually. Uh, what's great is we can make uh, different variations of that for the local market, which is one of the nice things uh, I've liked working with the brands, being able to uh, give inputs, yeah, when it comes to like the midsole, the colors, the color blockings, what's good for the next three seasons. Because you, you, you work on products three seasons, four seasons ahead. So whatever we're coming out, we've already chosen that for a year ahead already. You know, we have a game plan to make it uh, stay that way for a very, very long time. Not just now. Like you know, the disruptor may not be the the biggest thing right now in shoes, but we have other shoes uh, in the lineup that you know are are gonna be sustainable for the business. What uh, made you decide to have like that? Um, you know, it's it, it's crazy that um, the position that you are in now could be very different from your position in like three months, six months, nine months, two years, even five years. Like what we're doing now, you could be in an entirely different place and situation in that time. And uh, before I started uh, Life Tech, I was more into consumer goods mm -hmm. and stuff. Now more about sharing experiences with different people that I believe in or I'm interested in. You know, the Life Tech show is about uh, conversations with people that I like to get to know more or have just an interest in knowing what they do mm -hmm. and vice versa. Before Life Deck, I tried doing vlogging and for four months mm -hmm. I've created so much content. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was about to share one video, I wasn't happy about it because uh, I felt like after watching it, I didn't become smarter, but just I felt like, you know, it's not giving enough value for my audience. Yeah. And I felt like it's not being me. Like a favorite episode? Um, I have a, quite a few of them. <laughs> one that would be very special to me would, would be Season 1, Episode 10 with Douglas Brocklehurst. I mean, yeah, yeah. Douglas is one of my favorite because he started as an intern of mine. Uh, for my Soul Slam events back in 2013 uh, and um, he was very different because he had a very wandering mind and he always asked a lot of questions like how do you do this how do you execute that you know to the point it becomes a little annoying already as someone that does events so but then you come across what he's done and he's done so many different types of events for the for the culture that's very relevant and I'm so proud of him with what he's done. He's doing some more and now he's working on his own consulting uh, group. So you mentioned work-life balance, so how does it go for you? Like 16 um, hours a day? There is no work-life balance, to, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe in work-life balance because uh, being an entrepreneur is really at a rancid, frantic pace for me. Uh, I'm not in control really, but I'm still in control, that type of thing. You know, uh, there could be a meeting that I have to attend to and there could be something I need to do right away mm -hmm. after that. You know, things could happen, you know. Um, so for me, um, I've had zero vacations this year. Uh, my travel to another country was about business. So I've had no vacations. My vacation is my sleep. People want to have something that, you know, like do something that on the side, but then be able to, to go to the beach and relax and make money. Uh, I'm not a believer in, in that. Uh, I believe in you have to work on things that you want to do continuously. Um, I, don't, I don't believe in what they say, like extra income. I don't have extra income. I only have income. That's it.
I don't believe in short-term money making because the the faster you gather all these uh, resources for yourself, the faster it goes away. I, I believe in something that you can do long term, which I can pass on to the next generation, which I can pass on to my children and stuff like that. You know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of doing something just for now. I I do think something that make me happy but also can can be done for a very very long time like i'm gonna say the same things that i believe in until everyone that i know or watches me or listens to me would do the almost the same thing in their own way you know um like when when a kid asks me how like how it's a funny question like how do i become you like <laughs> in tagalog like how to be you like, like you don't you become you you create you as a person you like I've done like trying to find myself for over 30 years but I was not able to find myself but instead I created myself and that's one advice I would give is like you know you shouldn't be trying to find yourself in your place or your purpose in in the world today but creating your purpose you create that need for your purpose in the world, so it become invaluable to the world. Fans, followers, um, engagement. You know, when it comes to social media, that's the easiest way you can talk to your, mm -hmm. to your audience. And that's how you grow your audience. Like, mm -hmm. when you say um, you want to have abs, right, what do you do? You First thing you think about is doing crunches or setups, right? Yeah. So you do, let's say, 10 a day, okay? And that 10 a day is equal to one reply to a person. So if you reply 10 times, that's 100 crunches for you. So you do that more and more, that's how you have stronger core. Like, that's how I see uh, social media with, you know, when you want to become stronger, you have conversations because that's how social media is. When you put content out for people to look at, they will comment and you will reply. That's how it is. Some people tend to forget that, you know, how you become big is just putting up content every day. Even as a brand, even as a person, the most important thing you do is you have conversations. You have engagement. And engagement is talking back to them. You know, even acknowledging someone that, you know, like commenting, great, awesome, and then you reply with an emoji, with a thumbs up. It's a reply to them, or liking their comment. Future plans for Mr. Sosland? Um, I'd be lying if I told you I have so many plans for 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to focus on a few things. One is with Soul Slam, doing my own thing with, with Soul Slam. Uh, hopefully, I can do an event next year okay. uh, because I, I think I probably found my next venue for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, uh, focus on my consultancy uh, with my brands, especially with two uh, big brands that I'm handling, two of the biggest brands that I have. Three, um, growing my social media presence through LifeDeck. Those are the top three priorities uh, for me. So doing more consistently my life tech show on video, podcast, and podcast. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Antonio Aguirre and you are watching Clyde TV.